today. Kenya splits into two. Ghanaians are expected to have a tax identification number and an in-depth look at Ghana's army. Hi and welcome. My name is Goblin Nambo. This is the update on DGN. The Commissioner General of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Emmanuel Kofinti, has in a press statement said that effective 1st April 2018, persons without a tax identification number or TIN will, among many other things, be unable to obtain a passport, acquire a driver's license, open a bank account, or even file a court case. Now, this disclosure has sparked public outcry, especially among those in the corporate world. So what then is the tax identification number or TIN and how important is it for the average Ghanaian? The tax identification number is a number used by the Internal Revenue Service or IRS of a country to administrate tax laws. It is issued either by the IRS or the Social Security Authority. The role of the TIN is to track obligations and payments made to the IRS. Many have argued that a TIN is only important for corporate bodies, but in actual sense, obtaining a TIN is highly important for every Ghanaian citizen. In real-life situations such as filing for tax returns or claiming treaty benefits, a TIN is needed to process the right documents. Here are a few things obtaining a TIN will help you do. Clearing goods from any port or factory, securing government contracts, transacting business with the Registrar General, or securing payments with controller accounts. So how do you obtain a TIN? Individuals and organizations with taxable incomes can visit www.gra.gov.gh. You must also have a valid ID card, that's a national ID, a voter's ID, or a driver's license. You must have a valid email address. You must also have a completed taxpayer's form available at all GRA branches nationwide. Experts warn of an impending continental split as a 50-foot deep crack in the earth develops near Nairobi in Kenya. Since March 18, the Kenyan Republic has been in utmost awe of the 60-feet wide crack that seems to be splitting the continent into two. Dr. Ron Abney of the Ben Gurion University revealed that after thorough research, it is evident that the tectonic plates are tearing Africa into two parts. His findings came out to negate the assumptions of people who related the cause of the crack to heavy rains. Tectonic plates are broken pieces of Earth's crust and Earth's uppermost layer, also called a lithosphere, that move a few centimeters each year. These movements apparently allow a whole continent to shift thousands of kilometers apart in a process called continental drift. Most African countries are known to sit on the Nubian plate, which moves northward, while the rest of Africa sits on the Somali plate. Relative to each other, these two plates are gradually moving apart due to the western shift of the Nubian plate and eastern shift of the Somali plate resulting in the split. The exact mechanism that can be linked to the shift is still unknown, but scientists attributed it with a rift. The split starts from Mozambique all the way to Israel and stretches over 3,000 kilometers towards Zimbabwe in the south, consequently causing the African plates to split into two unequal parts, the Nubian and Somali plates. The split became evident when a large crack suddenly appeared in southwestern Kenya. In any case, it would take millions of years for Africa to split into two, resulting in a new island of the Somali plate. When it comes to the military strength of all African countries, factors such as refinements and technological advancements are taken into consideration. Ghana's armed forces, according to the Global Firepower Ranking, has the 15th best servicemen in Africa. With the aim of protecting Ghana's integrity from foreign aggression and maintaining internal security, the troops have gone a long way of keeping this at heart. The Ghana Armed Forces is liberated to commit a large number of its officers to international peacekeeping missions. Although such operations are mainly conducted in Africa, the United Nations has often relied on Ghana's army to conduct peacekeeping operations in different countries such as Lebanon, Afghanistan, Iraq, among others. Since their first participation in the UN peacekeeping operation in Congo in the 1960s, over 80,000 military men have served in more than 30 UN missions. Ghana has been a top 10 contributor for more than two decades. As of 30th September 2015, Ghana ranked 8th with about 3,247 peacekeepers 
comprising of over 2,000 troops and 74 military experts. As at October 2017, the accrued allowances per soldier on peacekeeping missions were $35 a day. The Ghana Army is believed to build upon its historical foundations as well as recognize and respect people's culture and beliefs, not forgetting its subjection to operational and occupational health and safety requirements. This, as a result, led to the establishment of ethical and moral codes based on the laws, traditions and principles of Ghana. To begin with, the concept of personal example is expected of all. Soldiers and officers are expected to set good examples by obeying the laws of the land and not causing any public disturbance. The Ghana Army believes this is a vital principle to instill trust among soldiers and strengthen teamwork. Another important responsibility of a soldier is to desist from politicization of the army. Soldiers are not allowed to accept gifts as a result of positions, rank or status from anyone outside or inside Ghana. The concept of professionalism is another important factor. In this case, every soldier is expected to train in a particular course, be it pilot training, sniping, or cooking in order to acquire the necessary knowledge and skills to perform a meaningful task. Lastly, the Ghana Armed Forces has a principle that weapons and force can only be used for the purpose of military operations and not to harm human beings who are prisoners of war. The Ghana Army is not open to any special persons in particular. Rather, it is open to anybody who is ready to serve mankind to the fullest. Here are some key requirements for recruitment into the Ghana Army. Applicants should be Ghanaian citizens by birth. They should be medically fit according to the Ghana Armed Forces standard. They should be between the ages of 20 and 25. They must not have any criminal record. And most importantly, they must possess at least five credits in WASI or a first degree from any recognized university. Ghana's army has over the years proven to be very reliable and effective. And as they continue to uphold our sovereignty, we'll continue to bring you more updates. For more in-depth stories, visit our website at dailyguideafrica.com and on all social media platforms at Daily Guide and Network. This has been the updates. My name is Godwin Nambu. Do stay with us.